Hello, I hope you are doing great. So, many times in our applications, one of the things we need to do is being able to charge our users um, based on subscriptions. One of the providers that is commonly used is PayPal with the subscribe button uh, functionality. Today we are going to see how to implement that in Blazor. Before continuing with that, please remember to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you get information on instant notifications when there are new videos uploaded to the channel. Share the videos, like them so we can get more subscribers and I can keep making more training videos for you. Remember we are doing videos for uh, .NET Core, Azure, Unity 3D, and Blazor. Okay, so in order to add PayPal buttons, what we need to do is well, we basically created a Razor library where we have our component. We have these payments. And in these payments, we have PayPal and we have this class subscribe button dot razor. This class, you see that it has a main div container. It has an if loading just to indicate if there is some data being loaded or some scripts being loaded at the moment. Uh, we have an if just verifying if we need to add the platform script or not. In case we need to add the platform script, we render the PayPal SDK. We basically add the script DAC for the PayPal SDK dynamically. And then we have the elements for the um, plan name and the container ID. You will see that in here I have the subscriber button .cs file. And in this file, I have, okay, we have the IJS runtime to be able to invoke the JavaScript code we need to invoke. We have the plan name, we have the add platform subscript, add platform script, client ID, the plan ID, the container ID. In the case we don't send the container ID as a parameter, we just use the default one. And this uh, component supports uh, invoking um, .NET or Blazor uh, c -sharp methods so we need to have the assembly and the actual function name to be able to invoke them. We have a uh, variable, control variable, can render buttons and then it's loading to control the spinner. Now you will see that in here when the component is, in is initialized if the add platform script uh, is false, basically we set the can render button to true, otherwise we don't set it to true. You will see that here we have this method, the render PayPal SDK, and this basically creates a render fragment where we are specifying the PayPal SDK script and we are passing the actual parameters such as the client ID. In this case, after we render the PayPal SDK, we set the can render buttons to true. And then we have this on after render async. So we verify if we can render the buttons and the page finish loading already. Uh, we do the render buttons. Here we are just waiting a couple of seconds just to guarantee that the actual scripts have been downloaded. Uh, that could probably be enhanced somehow, but so far that's what has been working. Uh, so we render the buttons, we say this set this loading flag to false, and we invoke the state has changed um, again. And then the next time it does the after render, that's not going to be loading, so it won't duplicate it. 
Now you will see that in this render buttons, basically what we are doing is we are creating a parameter object, having the container ID, the plan ID, the function assembly name, and the function name, and we are using the JS runtime to invoke this script. This script is this function is defined in a script in the same um, <coughs> in the same component library in the www wrote the scripts payments paypal subscribe button you will see that <coughs> nothing there we have a render paypal button function defined and we receive the element id the plan id the unapproved function assembly name and the unapproved function name this is the usual uh, PayPal buttons uh, JavaScript that you get from PayPal when uh, from PayPal, PayPal plans when you do the get code, and it has some slight modifications to be able to invoke the laser function. So you see that here we do .NET dot invoke method to sync on the proof function assembly and the proof function name, and we send the parameters and the render ID is basically the render ID on the element ID we are receiving from our blazer component. The way to use this is basically you need to go to a page, you import the component, you put the buttons, right? Subscribe button, you set the add platform script to true or false uh so ideally is for the first element you add you will have it to true if you haven't imported the script any at any time before you see the client ID, you say the client id you set the container id you do the approve uh proof function assembly name you set it the approve function name i mean the assembly and the name you set the plan id and you put a name those names are actually the ones we are which are going to be rendered by the component and in the other button you put this to false uh, you set the different containers ID so the actual rendering renders on the different element and not on the same element that's actually why we set the container ID uh, this on a proof function is basically a static method containing in this same file but you can pretty much put it whatever you need it and basically here what we are doing is we do this uh, a static async method because we are going to invoke a controller sending the information you see this is the unapproved data and this is basically a strong type uh, object based on the properties retrieved from the uh, unapproved Yes, on a proof uh, results from the PayPal SDK function. And this method has to be a static and it has to be marked as JS invocable to be able to be invoked from uh, or PayPal buttons. Something I had to do this just a trick uh, inject the HTTP client but since this function is static basically what I had to do was creating uh, a static client and reference this other object uh, since this company is alive there is no issue as far as I know though I think this may not be the best way to do it or possibly better ways to do it but this is a workaround so with this client basically we invoke whatever uh, API we need to pass the data to. So you will see that in here, in the server side of the Blazor application, I have the PayPal controller, and I get the user subscribe, for example, and we receive a model which is of the same type. So basically, after the user has finished applying for the subscription, and that has been approved, we will call this endpoint and we will receive the information here and we will do whatever we need to do with that information depending on our application logic. Uh, so that's one way on how you could use or create PayPal subscription buttons. 
with Blazor applications. So let's see it in action. So, sorry, um, I think I need to remove my cache. Okay, and let's see. So, if I go to the PayPal page, you will see that I have this text. Uh, this is loading at the moment, and after a couple of seconds, I will see the PayPal buttons. Now, if I click this button, for example, I will get the PayPal. Um, PayPal uh, pop-up, you see that currently this is actually working on a sandbox that I set up for testing. And if everything works okay, we will be able to do the checkout and after doing the checkout we should receive the data in our um, API endpoint and the method in the API. So you will see that in here I actually receive a model and this model has information for the token, billing token, facilitator access token, the order ID and the subscription ID and I can store that in my database and then with some other API or background services check if the user uh, subscription is going to expire or have better tracking of the monthly or uh, the subscription plan that my users have. So that's one way of how to implement uh, support for PayPal subscribe buttons in Blazor. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. Uh, remember, share the channel, subscribe to it, and let us know in the comments anything you would like to learn about .NET Core, Azure Unity 3D, and Blazor. Have a great day.